Welcome to Simplify Pharma. In this lecture, we will discuss the first step of quality by design and difference between TPP and QTPP. In pharmacy, it is very essential for a student to understand the concepts and more than that, it is essential to apply them. Therefore, I have introduced something interesting in this video. That is, concepts are explained with the help of case studies that will allow students to learn application of the concepts that we are learning. Please do like and subscribe to my channel and press the bell icon to get the new video updates. Now coming to the QBD, the very first step that we saw in our last video, it was to define product profile, which constitutes of two, that is TPP and QTPP. TPP means target product profile and QTPP means quality target product profile. So the very first step of QBD is to define product profile. Now let's see what is TPP that is target product profile. Now target product profile, it is a key document which provides information to the Food and Drug Administration about a drug development process. One thing we all need to understand the entire QBD process that we are doing, but QBD is nothing but a document, a document that we submit to the FDA and that documents, it gives information regarding the drug development process. So this entire QBD process is about documentation. And we can say thus this TPP is a planning tool in drug development. It's a planning tool that we use in drug development. So what is the purpose of TPP? The purpose of TPP is to ensure that the drug development process of the manufacturer, it is efficient and it provides all the required relevant medical, technical and scientific information for evaluating the commercial outcome of a drug. So this is what TPP is. Now, you can imagine when you are developing a drug, you need a guideline to help you understand what you are aiming for. As I gave previous example, it's like working in a laboratory. Now, in order to make any product in a lab, obviously before starting the experiment, the teacher provides you with the aim, objective, materials, chemicals that are required, procedure that we are going to follow and the calculation that we are going to do. What is all that? That is the profile that is being given to you. So in the similar manner, if you want to manufacture any new product, you need to have a product profile. Now, why are we calling it as a target product profile? First of all, let's see the definition of TPP. A prospective summary of the quality characteristics of drug product that ideally will be achieved to ensure the desired quality taking into account safety and efficacy of the drug product. So when I said ki when you're developing a drug, you need a guideline that helps you to understand what you are aiming for. So once we know that guideline and once we know what we are aiming for, then we can also determine what will be the end results that I want to see in my drug or that I want to see in my product. So TPP, it helps to define what those end goals are. So it is a tool that outlines the desired profile or characteristics of a product. Jab hum kuch banana chahte hain, any product that we want to manufacture. Before manufacturing that product, we need a guideline. What are we manufacturing? For what disease are we manufacturing? What is the target population? And how are we going to manufacture it? Will it show the results which it is, you know, which it should show? So all this profile, it comes under target product profile. So it includes dosage form, route of administration, dosage strength, pharmacokinetics, stability. Starting from usage information indication and then adverse reaction information about overdosing, description of various aspects of the drug, 
clinical pharmacology toxicology study clinical studies the references that were used then storage and handling condition information even about patient counseling anything and everything related to the drug or related to the product that we want to manufacture is included in target product profile so this tpp is patient and labeling centered concept when we say patient and labeling centered concept what does it mean it can identify desired performance characteristics of the product see in order to manufacture any new product first of all the thing that should come into your mind is the disease that you want to target i want to manufacture a product that targets cancer i want to manufacture anti cancer product i want to manufacture product for example uh, that targets uh, migraine so i want to manufacture anti migraine product so this is how we come up with the aim or objective so as for that we have to identify the desired performance characteristics of the product and that should be related to the patient's need that's why the very first thing that we have to keep in mind what do the patient require the patient require a sustained release dosage form whether the patient require immediate release dosage form how you know we have to take into consideration the patient compliance and it is organized according to the key section in the drug labeling so first thing we have to keep in mind the patient requirement and second thing that we have to keep in mind how the entire target product profile is organized main thing keeping in mind the drug labeling so that's why it is patient and labeling centered so in target product profile first of all you have to identify the target how do we do that that is we have to define what are the patient needs and as per that we have to design the drug labeling so first we have to identify the target then we have to design it and then we have to implement it uh let's see a bit more in detail when i say we have to identify the target that is depending upon the patient need the label use taking into consideration the safety and efficacy of the product you will identify the target so that will be like defining the target product prof profile or maybe we can also call it as a qtpp quality target product profile then we have to design it that's why come into the picture the design formulation and the design process and this is a reason we identify cma and cpp critical material attributes and critical process parameters and then when we have to implement it how are we going to implement it by establishing the control strategy and then we monitor and update the process this is like a continuous process so we can also summarize by saying what is tpp it outlines a desired profile or characteristics of a product it also summarizes the drug development program in terms of labeling concept so what do you ultimately want to see in your drug label it's also a useful document because it is shared with appropriate fda staff and other regulatory agency staff this also allows us to facilitate the communication between uh, the pharmaceutical industry and regulatory staff and also amongst the uh, you know people those are working in the pharmaceutical industry it was also helpful for them so in a way you can say you know there is back and forth communication between the drug development program all the people those are involved in the drug development program in this way the regulatory agency can actually kind of take a glimpse into the program to see what your end goals are and if they think there is something that needs a change they can even comment on that now this tpp is completely voluntary process and also it is dynamic it's going to keep changing over time because as and when you get new information about the product you have to keep adding into the tpp because it happens over a period of time you will keep getting some other other information regarding your product or the drug the more information you have the more your program might change that is also a thing
the fda has published guidelines that i have shown here for industry and it outlines what they would like to see in a target product profile it is a good tool for drug developers to use when they are first putting together their tpp this i have pulled from the internet as you can see this is the published guidelines by the uh, fda if you have to draft your tpp what are the benefits of tpp there are many benefits to having a tpp during a drug de drug development process the first benefit is it ensures the appropriate safety and efficacy data they are generated in order to make claims that you want to make so it's important to really outline in the beginning of your drug development program what safety and efficacy data you need to generate it also identifies possible gaps in the drug development program so you can imagine that if you are outlining what data you want to collect what information you want to see or what goal you want to hit it can really highlight some of the gaps that you might have and it also helps prioritize the resources you use a lot of resources in terms of money and manpower in a drug development program so it is very very essential to prioritize those resources we can save lots and lots of money and time and also manpower so having that outlined in tpp it can be very helpful it can minimize the risk of late stage drug development failure and i think part of this has to do with it you know really outlining what data we need to collect and what are our end goals once we outline that concept obviously the risk of failures will reduce then it helps in communication with the regulatory team with the industry and also within the industry different departments it helps them communicate uh, a tpp must be reviewed and updated periodically as and when the new information is available so we cannot say we have one target it's like a moving target because the in new information will keep pouring and we will have to add it to the tpp especially when there are times of really rapid and fast paced drug development in that case you know it's okay most of the drug development teams they do periodic review of the tpp every 6 month every 12 month just to make sure everything in tpp is up to date and relevant now coming to the next concept that is quality target product profile it is a set of elements that defines a drug product same as tpp our target or goal is set in advance again same as tpp it is a guide to drug development process program again as tpp so we can say it is a tool for setting strategy for the drug development taking into consideration safety and efficacy of the product so up till now everything is similar between tpp and qtpp then where does the difference lie p is identification of those attributes that are critical to the quality of the drug product taking into consideration intended usage and route of administration so tpp indicates what a drug will do a qtpp indicates the quality targets necessary to do it you know there is somewhere in the literature you will find there is a overlap between tpp and qtpp but we have to understand what is the main difference between both and this table will help you identify the main difference as you can see in target product profile it contains all the information related to the drug even storage handling condition the patient counseling everything about the drug whereas qtpp it contains only data that can affect the quality of the product so that's a difference if for example this is like a to z of the product and this is just few alphabets of the product that can affect the quality of the product so these two documents they are routinely used during development however it's very important to keep in mind that tpp focuses on the overall program needs so it constitutes of the entire program whereas qtpp it focuses on the actual drug product itself example of qtpp for the topical product 
this is a case study that we are taking this is how a qtpp look like as i told you this entire qpt process is documentation so when we talk about tpp qtpp obviously these are also documents so this is how a qtpp document is made it will constitute of drug product quality attributes all these attributes that can affect the quality of the drug they are written then the target whether they are critical or not and you have to justify the criticality understand it further by taking one more case study this is one more research paper that i have pulled from the internet in which the author has tried to optimize a micellar based in situ gelling system using qbd approach so uh, this main uh, in situ gelling system is used for ocular infection fungal ocular infection as you can see over here this is how a qtpp was made for the particular product so the route of administration was ocular because the topical application to the targeted tissue this is a justification then the next factor delivery system micellar based in situ gel what is a justification increase the contact time of drug delivery system with ocular tissue in the similar manner all the important characteristics that can affect the quality of the product they are considered over here what is the target and what is the justification so this is how a qtpp sheet looks like this is one more case study that i pulled from the internet it constitutes of qtpp sheet for a generic acetriptan tablet 20 mg as we can see the dosage form target justification like this all the important characteristics that can affect the quality of the product that are mentioned over here and the target and as per that the justification is mentioned so this is how a qtpp sheet looks like so this was all that was in this video difference between tpp and qtpp i hope you have understood the concept with the help of all these case studies i hope these case studies have been really helpful and in the next part of the video i'll be coming with the step 2 of qbd that is cqa critical quality attributes so do subscribe to my channel to stay updated with the latest video that i keep on uploading thank you